and welcome to this week's preview show where Chris Temple is back alongside me as we discuss all things AFC Bournemouth in the next 15 minutes or so. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at the weekend and the 1-0 defeat at Carrow Road. And then we'll turn our attention to tomorrow night's game against Brighton here at Vitality Stadium. Well, first we're going to start back at last weekend and that 1-0 defeat at Carrow Road. Chris, sadly not the result we were wanting. What did you make of it? Um, it's funny, it, yes, the result's the same and, and no points and no goals, um, but actually I, I came away feeling a bit better, if that sounds, uh, it, it sounds probably stupid, but there were some chances, um, there was a bit of fight, there was a bit of a battle, and of course when you go down to 10 men, if you're going to stay in the game, you've absolutely got to battle, and I thought they did, um, and yes, you know, there were probably two or three decent chances, one, I mean, Callum had a great chance, Dan Gosling had a good chance ahead, I'm not sure if it just grazed a Norwich head in front of him, which might have put him off, and then obviously Ake's late header at the end, you know, they're, they're probably the three chances that you say, okay, on a better day, one of those goes in and you get something, um, but the fact they, they managed to stay in the game, Aaron Ramsdale made some good saves, um, towards the end to keep it a one, they'll at least keep it alive for when Norwich had someone sent off, um, I mean... You look at the Steve Cook moment and if, it, if the situation wasn't so disappointing at the moment, you'd have to just laugh because, I mean, it's an unbelievable save. Brilliant save, No one it? knows what he was thinking at the time. He, I'm, I'm pretty sure as soon as he's done it, he's gone, oh no. Um, but it's just, it, it, I mean, it's not one of those where you suddenly just quickly put your hand up. I mean, he's fully gone and dived. He's committed, hasn't he's he? He's committed himself. It, it's a great save. Um, but in the context of you know, what you need at that time, wasn't a great decision from him. A uh, long way back from there. But yeah, I mean, after the Watford game, I think everybody's chins were pretty much on the floor because that was uh, that was billed as a big game and there was no sort of performance in that game. Uh, this at Norwich was billed as a big game. There was, there was bits of a performance. And I think with another game coming so quickly, I think that gives some hope that there might be a corner being turned. And, you know, it obviously being down to 10 men, nil-nil when we were down to 10 men, if you forget, obviously, the goal was scored just after Steve Cook came off. What, what did you make of, you know, as you say, there was a lot of fight, a lot of determination, Callum Wilson having, you know, that header in the first chance and he unfortunately slipped in the second half. There were, as you say, plenty more positive. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't fluid by any, by any means. It wasn't the ball, you, know, you weren't nowhere near back to the Bournemouth that we've become used to watching over the last few seasons. But, you know, there were people chasing down everything. I mean, Callum had a, a pretty forlorn lone role. I mean, I know they sort of stuck wee man up with him sort of latter, latter part of the game as a sort of 4-3-2. Um, but when you've only got 10 men and you're, you're sort of a, a striker of Callum Wilson's nature, he did a lot of running, obviously got a nasty, nasty challenge on him as well, which led to the Norwich red card. Um, but yeah, I, I felt overall, um, yeah, it was probably, we're probably looking at a five out of 10 performance or maybe a six at a push, which in the grand scheme of things recently is actually a bit better than it has been. So uh, again, you'll always get the negativity because the, the negative ones are the ones that make the loudest noise from behind the keyboards and behind the phones and everything. Um, but actually, I think the fans that went, most of them stayed to the end and applauded the team for their effort, given that they played an hour with 10 men. And I just want to mention Aaron Ramsdale as well. You mentioned him just a moment ago. He made some superb saves in the second half. You know, Bournemouth pushing forward, trying to find that equaliser, perhaps left them a little bit open at the back. And Aaron Ramsdale was there to, you know, avert the danger every time. Yeah, I think Norwich will look at themselves and think they probably should have finished better. Certainly Pukki, when he went through one-on-one, -on -one, he, he basically might as well have held a sign up saying, I'm going to just put it there, Aaron. So Aaron Ramsdale was also on the floor already. But yeah, you're right. He made a couple of good saves, a good punch away. Had a, he had a little five minutes, didn't he, where he just suddenly was in the game. Uh, and just kept it at one goal, which gave a chance for, I think Ake's header was in the 89th minute that got tipped over. So as long as you can stay in the game, you've always got a chance of nicking one. There was a scramble, wasn't there, where there were bodies flying around towards the end. So it, it didn't bounce their way. It was a huge result for Norwich. I mean, let's not forget, you know, that was a massive win for them. So they weren't playing against a team in mid-table who were coasting. They were playing against a team who were scrapping and battling for their own results. Saying that, they are bottom. So therefore, you know, if you, if you can not sort of put a bit of a performance in against the team who are bottom, then, you know, you'd be saying you should be doing that against those teams. And obviously, just finally, you know, Steve Cook, red card, will be out for the Brighton game. We've seen Chris Meppham has had surgery. I want to throw a name into the mix. Lloyd Kelly, he played on Friday. He played an hour for the under-21s up in Nottingham. It remains to be seen whether he'll be match fit for tomorrow, but to see him back on the grass and back on the training field will be huge encouragement. And for most people, he's an unknown quantity, isn't he? Because he costs, what, the best part of 12, 13 million from Bristol City over the summer. Came with a you know, pedigree as one of Eddie Howe's sort of young British talents to watch, you know, from the Lewis Cook, David Brooks kind of mould. Quite a big fee for not a lot of football behind him. 
Um, but as you say, you were there at Alfreton on Friday night where they, uh, the under-21s kept a clean sheet. You played an hour. Um, I, I'm not sure if you'll be involved tomorrow. The, the sort of word from Eddie was they're going to treat him quite delicately and not rush anything. So maybe another week's training under his belt. Um, and then I guess the Arsenal Cup game looks... Uh, if they want to make changes, I mean, that looks a great game for him to come into um, to rest a couple. But then the games are quite nicely spread out. So there's not that pressure sometimes of having to change it. But And also a cup tight home to Arsenal. I and mean, that's a great game to be involved in. So uh, that would be that would be big for him to test himself against good opposition without the pressure of Premier League points. So, yeah, but I mean, a, a body coming back is great news, particularly with Steve Cook out. And I must address something, by the way, that people sometimes get mixed up about red cards and how long people are out for. A straight red card isn't a three-game ban automatically. There are different offences for which you get different bans. A handball is is a, is a one-game ban. So Steve Cook is only out for Tuesday. I had people tweeting me the other day saying it's a straight red, so he's out for three games. That's not how it works. No, no violent conduct there. <laughs> anyway, now our attention turns to tomorrow's game against Brighton here at Vitality Stadium. Let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in his pre-match press conference. Very little between the two sides at the start of the game and we created a few chances. They had a couple of chances as well and I thought from that point we rallied well, we stuck at our task, we stayed in the game and again there was a few chances at the end of the game to get a point but it didn't quite happen. For me there's only one way to react and that's to fight back, to keep going and try and prove people wrong. I've, I think I've got the bank of knowledge and experience to fall back on and I think I'm going to need that now. A change of style um, from last season. Um, I think Graham's done a very good job, continues to implement how he wants his team to play. I expect a, a good game between two teams who are battling for points. It's very much in our hands. We can do it. We're not cut adrift. It's not a hopeless cause, as many people may like to make out around us. Um, but as I said, using those those doubters and those that criticism as a positive, I think, is the only way uh, only way forward for us at this moment. Confidence affects you in different ways, but I can assure everybody the players care deeply. They're really hurting at the moment and they want to come out of this spell as quickly as possible. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking this morning ahead of the game against Brighton. Chris, they've had kind of a, a mixed season so far. What have you made of it? Yeah, I mean, pretty much the form they were in when Bournemouth went down there just after Christmas. Um, in and out, really. A bit inconsistent. Um, playing better football, I think more enjoyable football for the fans to watch, which I think we said before the, the last game. But, you know, again, it's that, that balance between playing a nicer football but actually not getting great results. So one win in nine in all comps, um, including losing at home to Sheffield Wednesday in the Cup. And the only win, of course, was over Bournemouth um, on a day when, again, Bournemouth didn't really show up there. That was, again, billed as a big game, didn't really put in a performance that people could sort of be proud of that day. So, yeah, it's a brighter in that group of teams that are just hovering above Bournemouth that you sort of want to sort of reach out and claw back down. So this would be this is a great opportunity to do that. Um, that that's the problem with this run that Bournemouth are on against all the teams around them. No goals, no points hardly. Um, everybody's gaining ground. Nobody, Everyone's sort of slipping away. Watford are slipping away a little bit. And Villa to come in the next game looks big as well. So these next two, um, Brighton and Villa, could, I don't want to say they could be decisive because there's still another however many games to go after that, another 13 games left after that. But um, it, it certainly will garner the mood, I think, in terms of the belief that they can get out of this with a lot of big games to come. So, yeah, Brighton are just in that. They're, they're a good target, I would say, in, in, in the table. Uh, and given that they only drew it home to Villa at the weekend, you know, most of the results actually at the weekend probably went Bournemouth's way in terms of everybody down the bottom either drew or lost, um, obviously apart from Norwich. Um, so yeah, it, it wasn't Brighton Villa drawing actually was quite a good result from a Bournemouth point of view. And it, it does seem very much like we've only just played them. But as for Brighton, you mentioned they're not on a on a great run of form, but that could almost make them even more determined, couldn't it? Yeah, it just, it just means you don't quite know what you're going to get. I mean, away from home, I think they're usually stronger at home than away from home. Um, you know, they're quite reliant on Mopé, Neil Mopé for their goals. They get obviously danger from set pieces, the likes of Duncan, Duffy and Adam Webster have contributed uh, many goals down the last couple of seasons, so they, they carry that threat from set plays. Dan Byrne, of course, scored and it was disallowed in the uh, the return fixture as well, So and Jan Batch, who hadn't scored for, for Brighton at all, and then scored against Bournemouth, so if you want to end a run, play Bournemouth, basically. Um, yeah, so they, they, they're in and out. It's, it's very hard to know which Brighton will turn up, but the one thing is, it's a home game under the lights. They always tend to have just that little bit extra edge here, 
Um, I'm hoping the fans, there was a little bit of dissent the other day, um, just speaking to a couple of friends I have who sit in the, the home areas, they just said there was one or two just sort of dissenting voices and Eddie Howe's been quite clear, he said, don't dissent towards the players, if you've got a problem at the end, direct it towards me when I walk around and I'm, I'm saying thank you for your support. Um, so that's his message this week, I think, is, is stay on side with the players for the 90 minutes, that, that can help them. Um, any problems, Eddie will face up to them afterwards. And the fact that this game comes so close after the weekend, that for the you know for us could be well, and obviously Brighton, it, it can be a massive plus because you can put that Norwich game behind them and then go into a new week, you've got a new game three days after, and it's another great opportunity to you know end this run and get some points on the board. I think they I think they're happy they've got another game. Speaking to Eddie this morning, I think he's he's pleased that having had a couple of positives, that they've got a quick chance now to get straight back out there and build on the the little shoots that they had, uh, put the Norwich result out of their mind. Um, so I think, yeah, a quick game is a good game in this, in this sense. Um, and yeah, hopefully, I mean, niggles wise, I think the only one who's, who's sort of continuing to carry something is Jefferson Lerma, who's not 100% fit. Um, he had a hamstring problem that he was managing. He's got a couple of whacks in the last couple of games. He took one against Norwich. He was limping pretty early on, battled on to whenever he got taken off later in the game. So, it, and a guy of his importance, to have him not firing 100% is, is not ideal. So um, I wouldn't be wholly surprised if he actually got rested tomorrow night because you can't afford a... I mean, I suppose with Arsenal coming up, it's not quite so important. But he's one at the moment who is um, struggling a little bit. Um, but everybody else hopefully has had time over the, with the schedule to rest those those problems. Presumably Simon Francis will come in um, for Steve Cook at centre-half as, as a straight swap. Having just got a bit of a balance back four settled and back with Smith back and Ake back, um, for the first time, I think, since the start of November, that back four that played on Saturday had played together. So um, it's a shame to have to undo it already. And just on Brighton, there once to what you mentioned, <coughs> Neil Moore plays seven goals for them this season, their top goal scorer. And, you know, they've got threats from the back that can come up and score their goals. So they've got one or two to look out for, don't they? Yeah, feisty one, Neil Moore. He got in a tangle at the end, didn't he, with, against Villa on Saturday. He got in a bit of a, a schmozzle at the post-match. Um, final whistle with Tyra Mings was in there. I think either trying to break it up or stir it up, one of the two. Um, but yeah, it was. He, he's a feisty character. Had a good game against Bournemouth um, in the return fixture at the Amex. So... And again, he, he was up against Chris Mepham, his former Brentford teammate in that game, which he won't be this time round. So yeah, he, he's certainly a threat. Um, he tends to play, you know, pretty much as a lone striker for them. Young Aaron Connolly's got a couple of goals, um, you know, up and coming star as well, Irish lad. So um, yeah, they've, they've, they've got goal threats, um, but I don't think it's a bad game for Bournemouth. I think it's quite a good game at home off the back of, you know, a, a slightly more positive performance against a team who aren't in great form. I know Norwich had won one in 17, but... I just, I just feel like this is quite a good game and I feel like it's quite a good opportunity tomorrow. Of course, fond memories under the lights against Brighton a few years ago. We had, I'm testing you here, 1-0 cool, down and then Andrew Salmon scored, Jermaine Defoe scored. Oh, it's yeah. quite early on in the season. <coughs> and uh, well, yeah, Defoe's go on first to goal for the club. I, I think, think it was, yeah. 2-1 yeah. 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 a few seasons ago, so fond you memories were, I wonder where you were going with that, but yes, no, I do remember that now. Yes, so that, maybe that's a sign. Maybe, that's maybe a sign. it is, maybe it is. Well, if you are coming to Vitality Stadium tomorrow, make sure you have a safe journey. If not, make sure you listen to Chris on BBC Radio Solent for all the latest updates. Bye for now.